dorthin oder also ein Mensch wie Koras, der trifft dann auch dorthin, wohin er schießen möchte. Before World War II started, Marina Reskova was a military navigation instructor at the Soviet Zhukovsky Air Academy. In late September 1938, she impressed the Soviet authorities by flying 4,010 miles from Moscow to the Komsomolsk on Amur in the Russian Far East in 26 hours and 29 minutes, setting a new world record. She was the Soviet equivalent of the American Amelia Earhart. After the Germans invaded the Soviet Union in June 1941, there were numerous women who had training as pilots and many immediately volunteered. While there were no formal restrictions on women serving in combat roles, their applications tended to be blocked or slowed. The applicants ran into bureaucratic red tape, delaying the prospective female pilots for as long as possible to discourage them from enlisting. Raskova rose to the challenge of cutting through Soviet bureaucracy and appealed directly to Joseph Stalin. He ordered the military to form three combat regiments of women. On September 8, 1941, Raskova gave a speech which called for women pilots to be allowed to fight. Stalin responded on October 8, 1941 with Order No. 99, forming the all-female 122nd Aviation Corps. Not only would the women be pilots, but also support staff and engineers. This order formed the 586th Fighter, 587th Bomber, and 588th Night Bomber Aviation Regiments. We'll be covering the 588th Night Bomber Regiment. Members of the regiment were deployed from the Engels Military Aviation School near Saratov to the Southern Front as part of the 218th Division of the 4th Air Army on May 23, 1942. They arrived on May 27. June 12, 1942. The regiment's baptism by fire took place on the southern front in bombings of river crossings on the Mayas, Severny Donuts, and Don Rivers, as well as roads on the South Steps and Stavropol suburbs. Roskova took over the 587th Bomber Regiment. As a pilot with 10 years of experience, Yevdokia Bershanskaya was chosen to lead the 588th Night Bomber Regiment. This all-female aviation regiment was not welcomed initially into the military with open arms. 
Many of their male counterparts saw them as inferior and treated them with a lack of respect. They were also given hand-me-downs of uniforms and oversized shoes by the men, as well as rudimentary tools such as rulers, flashlights, and pencils that lacked the luxury that the male soldiers received with their tools, like radar, guns, and radios. August to December 1942, in the Battle of the Caucasus, the regiment defended the city of Vladikavkaz as well as bombing enemy equipment and troops in Digora, Mazdak, and Pradladnaya. January 1943. Assisted in the breakthrough of enemy defensive lines on the Tarek River as well as offensive operations against ground troops in the Kuban River Valley and Stavropol. This is a view of the cockpit of the U-2 biplane. This is a view of the cockpit with the controls identified. Although the civilian versions were usually crop dusters, the PO-2 was very reliable and highly maneuverable. To this day, it remains the most produced wood airframe biplane in aviation history, with well over 30,000 built. Polycarpov U-2 biplanes were made of wood and canvas, a 1928 design intended for use as a training aircraft. The designation prefix of U means training. It had a Schwetzoff M11 air-cooled five-cylinder radial engine of 150 horsepower, although some sources state that the engine was rated at 125 horsepower. The 588th flew a special U-2 LNB version for their night harassment attack missions. Although in literature it has been referenced as U-2 and PO-2, for clarity we'll call it U-2 from now on. The U-2 LNB version was a two-seat night attack version first built in 1942. It was armed with a 7.62 mm SHKS machine gun for rear defense, plus up to 551 pounds of bombs under the wings for land support. The plane couldn't carry many bombs, so eight or more missions per night were often necessary. The U-2 could carry from two to six bombs depending on the weight of the bombs. For example, if the weight of each bomb was 110 pounds, then the biplane could carry six of them. Here are some views of the plane from different angles. March to September 1943. Assisted in the breakthrough of the Kuban bridgehead and the liberation of Novorossiysk. April to July 1943. Participated in the campaign of aerial warfare over Kuban. November 1943 to May 1944 provided air support to ground troops in the kirsch eltikin operation as part of the Crimean offensive in the city of Sevastopol. An attack technique of the night bombers involved idling the engine near the target and gliding to the bomb release point, with only wind noise left to reveal their presence. German soldiers likened the sound to broomsticks and named the pilots Nachthexen, or night witches. Due to the weight of the bombs and the low altitude of flight, the pilots did not carry parachutes until 1944. The U-2's five-cylinder radial engine had an unusual exhaust manifold arrangement that gave the engine a peculiar rattling or popping sound and led to a number of nicknames. Wehrmacht troops nicknamed it the Nehmaschine, or sewing machine, and Finnish troops called it the Hemmersaw, nerve saw. The Germans also called it Kaffeemühle, which literally means coffee grinder. The fabric and wood construction of the biplane made it extremely vulnerable to catching fire, resulting in the Russian nickname of Kerosinka, or Kerosene Lantern. The material effects of these missions may be regarded as minor, but the effect on German troops was noticeable. The Nachthexen typically attacked by surprise in the middle of the night, denying German troops sleep and keeping them on their guard, contributing to the already high stress of combat on the Eastern Front. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss out on future content. The usual tactic involved flying only a few feet above the ground, 
climbing for the final approach, throttling back the engine and making a gliding bombing run, leaving the targeted troops with only an eerie whistling in the wind of the wing's bracing wires as an indication of the impending attack. The Messerschmitt Bf 109 and the Folkewolf FW 190 were the Germans' primary fighters on the Eastern Front during the Russo German conflict. These were usually the fighters that met the Nachhets in, in combat. Luftwaffe fighters found it extremely hard to shoot down the U 2 because of two primary factors. The Soviet pilots flew at treetop level where they were hard to see or engage, and the U 2 could slow down a lot. Here are the stall speeds for the three fighters. The U-2 has 40 miles per hour, BF-109, 55 miles an hour, FW-190, 127 miles per hour. And by the way, the FW-190, if it dropped below that, below the stall speed, it actually would drop its port wing and suddenly flip onto its back. The BF-109 was simply too fast, and so was the FW-190 for the U-2. So they have a very small window where they could attack it. The stall speed of the BF-109 was 55 miles an hour. The FW-190 stall speed was 127 miles an hour. The U-2 could go just above its stall speed of 40 miles an hour, and the German fighters would have just a small window to keep the biplane within weapons range. The success of the Soviet night harassment units inspired the Luftwaffe to set up similar Sturkampfstaffel harassment combat squadrons on the Eastern Front, using their own obsolete 1930s era open cockpit biplanes. This is an example of the German Arado AR-66 biplane. This is an example of the German Gotha Go-145. Later, the Germans created larger Nachschlaggruppe, night attack group, units of a few squadrons each. June to July 1944, bombed enemy fortifications along the Pronia River, helping to take control of Bialystok, Kurven, Minsk, and Mogilev in Belarus. August 1944, operations over Poland in campaigns to expel the Germans from the city of Augustal, Warsaw, and Ostrolaika. The Germans started hunting the hunters. One German pilot in particular, Leutnant Josef Kukjok, with his BF-110, found his targets. On the night of July 31, 1943, he tore apart a Nachthexen raid, shooting down four U-2s, grounding the entire regiment for the first time in the war. For this feat, he was nicknamed Hexenjäger, or Witch Hunter. Even so, the 588th bounced back and continued the night raids against the Germans. Irena Subrova. At the age of 23, she was already an experienced flight instructor at the Frunze Flight Club in Moscow. In 1938, she graduated from the Moscow Aero Club, and in 1940, she began training in military aviation. After joining the Red Army in October 1941, she completed her military aviation studies at Angles, and in 1942 was assigned to the 588th Night Bomber Regiment. During the war, she flew 1,008 combat sorties on the U-2 more than any other member of the regiment. After her 825th sortie, she received the title Hero of the Soviet Union on February 23, 1945. In 1940, Natalia Mecklen joined the glider school at the Kiev Young Pioneer Palace and later graduated from the Moscow Aviation Institute in 1941. She was sent to the front as the chief of communications of a squadron in the 588th Night Bomber Aviation Regiment. Initially, she flew as a navigator, but she soon retrained to become a pilot, and by May 18, 1943, she had made her first sortie as a pilot, which was her 381st mission. By the end of the war, she held the position of flight commander. She had flown roughly 980 night missions and dropped an estimated 147 tons of bombs on enemy-controlled territory. While a lieutenant, she was awarded the title Hero of the Soviet Union on February 23, 1945, after 840 missions and gained significant publicity. Twenty-three pilots from the regiment were awarded the title Hero of the Soviet Union. Two were awarded Hero of the Russian Federation, and one was awarded Hero of Kazakhstan. Great success! 
In total, 261 people served in the regiment, of whom 32 died of various causes including plane crashes, combat deaths, and tuberculosis. 28 aircraft were written off. The Night Witches flew more than 24,000 combat missions and dropped over 3,000 tons of bombs and 26,000 incendiary shells on enemy forces. Here are some pictures of the women who flew in the 588th. January 1945, participated in the East Prussian Offensive. March 1945, participated in offensives over Gdania and Gdansk. April and May 1945, assisted in the Vistula Order Offensive. If you liked what you see, hit the subscribe button or share. Thank you. This has been Immersus Tech.